Hi there, this is Bob Wormsley from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday time. And on today's video, we're going to be taking Mesh Tools Polyfold. We're going to use that with some of the other procedural modeling tools within Mesh Tools. And we're going to create some really nice abstract geometry animations. So let's begin. In our scene, we have this editable torus. This was just a primitive, and we made it editable and squashed it for this shape. We're going to make a loop selection of some polygons on this. So with it highlighted, let's go to polygon mode, hit U, L for the loop selection tool. Now, the polyfold tool works best when you've got uh, topology that's got really good uh, polygon flow. Um, so this, you can see, we can, we're able to select these really perfect loops of polygons that's telling me that the unfolding is going to look really good if you've got geometry which is pretty messy that isn't that well modeled that's triangles that hasn't got good flow then your polyfold isn't going to work as well so let's make a selection of these polygons and we're going to go to select and we will store that selection in this tag here look now let's go back to object mode with the torus selected, let's hold Alt and go to Insidia, Mesh Tools, and bring in a polyfold. And straight away, you can see that it's it started to unfold that. The reason that's happening, if we go to the polyfold, the distribution type is set to random with a point count of one. So it selected one random polygon and it started to unfold it. Look, it's unfolded it by 50% is the default. If we put that all the way down to zero, it's totally unfolded it to that polygon point. And then you can um, unwind it and send it back by animating this slider. But we don't want this to be random. We want to choose the polygons that are going to be unfolded. So we can change the distribution type from random to selection and drag in our poly selection. And now it's going to be unfolding it from that polygon selection. And we can see we're in clockwise mode. So it's unfolding it clockwise or if we have it in anti-clockwise mode, it will unfold it anti-clockwise. So let's just keep it in, I like it in clockwise for this one. So let's just keyframe this unfolding before we do anything else. So let's go to 100% on frame zero, add a keyframe. Let's go to maybe frame 119, put it back to zero, hit the keyframe. And now we're getting something that looks like this. Obviously, you can be more intricate in your animations. You can have it going, oscillating back and forth, whatever you want. But this will just do for us. So we can also offset the unfolding of these polygons as well by adding a bit of variation. If we put this on, say, 4%, you can see that we're getting this really cool spiraling effect as it is offset the rate at which they're unfolding. The only thing we have to do is make sure that we keyframe this back to zero when it reaches zero here. So to do that, let's hit this button, which will jump to the next keyframe. Let's click that, it jumps. And let's put a variation amount of zero. And then we'll go back to say frame 80 and put back in that um, amount of 4%, keyframe it. So then we've got that, but then the variation is keyframed down to zero, which means we get this perfect endpoint of our geo. Very cool. Okay, so if I hit NA, one thing you'll notice, if we go back to the beginning, we've uh, messed up our shading, and that's because this has become these polys have become disconnected. So what we need to do is go to our polyfold, advanced, and just click on optimize. Then it fixes that and joins it again. That's all nicely welded. Perfect. So now we've got this really cool unfolding. Let's go to our polyfold object tab and reduce the angle at which they fold. Because I don't want them to be wound as tightly. Something more like that is looking better to my eye. But obviously you can do whatever you want. This can be keyframed as well and animated. But that's looking pretty cool. Now I want to add a bit of depth to this. At the moment it's just one polygon thick. Let's just hit NB to see the lines. So we can add more mesh tools to this. Let's With polyfold selected, let's hold Alt. Go to Insidium Mesh Tools and add a shell gem. And in the shell gen, I'm going to add a thickness of two. And now we have this thickness. And what I want to do, let's just animate this back a bit. What I'd like to do is extrude these inner polygons. So to do that, I'm going to use another mesh tools. But first, I need to make a selection of these inner polygons. And I can do that in the shell gen selections tab. These are the caps, the inside ones. So let's just hit caps. That makes a selection of all of those caps. 
and then I can use this in another tool. So with this selected, hold Alt, go to Insidium, Mesh Tools, let's do an inset. And the inset, we want it to only affect um, that selection that we made. So let's drag in the selection. And if you keep your eye on these inner polys, if I hit the amount, you can see, look, we're making that inset polygon there. Let's just put it on full. We're going to offset that a little bit. So now we've kind of extruded those up, which looks pretty nice. We've got some teeth on our on our uh, strips. Let's just smooth this. So I'm going to hold Alt, go to Insidium, Mesh Tools, Subdivider, and put it in a Catmull Clock. Hit NA to hide the lines. And now we have got something that looks pretty cool. So obviously this is just one um, abstract example of how we can mess with our geometry to, to create either some pretty intricate um, modeling or some nice kind of abstract animations of geometry which would be very difficult to model if we weren't using these pretty cool and easy to use procedural tools.